Howdy again everyone! Like everyone else on this planet, I have a soft spot for the Fuji X-T series of cameras. They're beautiful, tough, tactile and controllable and are often packed with some of Fuji's best imaging technology. I even still own an X-T3 for lens testing emergencies and aside from anything else, the Fuji X system of APS-C sensor cameras and lenses is highly developed at this point even with some third party autofocus options. So recently, it's been an absolute pleasure for me to test out a new X-T5, which Fuji UK kindly loaned me for a month, along with some new lenses I hadn't got around to testing out. At US$1,700 or £1,700 pounds here in the UK, the camera is clearly a premium product, and while I'd like to thank Fuji UK very much for loaning me this camera for a month or so, still, this is a totally independent review. With the X-T5, there's very little not to like in terms of its build quality. The original Fuji X-T1 was so well thought out and now, nearly 10 years later, the fifth version of the camera is seriously well refined. While I'd never touched an X-T5 before, it still felt very, very familiar to me when I used it because last year I tested out its slightly older cousin, the excellent Fuji X-H2 camera. It's actually quite tempting to view this camera as simply being an X-H2 in a different camera body. After all, they're based on the same new backside illuminated image stabilized 40 megapixel sensor and powerful processor with the same ISO range and battery and there certainly will be some people more enamored with the tactile classic style of the X-T5 here than the bigger more modern style X-H2. But the X-T5 does have a lower price and a few features removed here and there, making it quite a distinctive camera, and in telling you some of the differences, I'll give you a flavour of what the X-T5 is all about. Both cameras have the same excellent weather sealed build quality and use the same powerful battery which offers power for about 600 shots. The X-T5 though, as I mentioned, offers lots more tactile controls for exposure settings, all with positive clicks and clear dials, including important features like an AF on button and a rear autofocus joystick. The viewfinder of the X-T5 is 3.69 million dots lower resolution than the 5.76 million of the X-H2 but still way more than enough for virtually anybody and it remains nice and big to look through. The screen of the X-T5 flips up and down, whereas on the X-H2 it's fully articulated. I prefer a flipping screen for stills photography as it's so quick to use, but an articulating screen is much more flexible and useful for video work. That screen on the X-T5 is also very high resolution, 1.84 million dots, a little better than the X-H2 and nice and bright as well. The maximum burst rate of the X-T5 is a fast 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and 20 in electronic shutter mode, just like the X-H2, but the X-H2 has a bigger buffer, so it can go on shooting for quite a bit longer. The mechanical shutter's durability of the X-H5 is rated at a massive half a million actuations, meaning you'll have to do a lot of shooting before wearing that thing out. The two cameras have almost the same video specification, including 10-bit 422 footage and downsampled high quality 4K, except that the X-T5 cannot shoot 8K footage, only 6.2K, although that's still plenty for most people. Oh, and the X-T5 loses out on one or two options like Apple ProRes recording and RAW recording. Both cameras have two card slots, which is very reassuring for professionals with UHS-2 SD cards, although on the X-H2, one of those card slots is the faster CF Express Type B kind. The HDMI connector on the X-T5 is only the tiny micro HDMI instead of full size HDMI, which does make it feel a bit less secure to use. The X-T5 is also a little smaller and about 100 grams lighter than the X-H2 and certainly feels less bulky and heavy in your hand. Both cameras have the same top-level Fuji autofocus systems, offering high-quality 
fast and customizable subject recognition. I did quite a lot of bird shooting with the X-T5 and found it to be just as good as the X-H2. Its autofocus system isn't quite as confident and reliable as the latest Sony and Canon cameras or the Nikon Z8 or Z9 in my opinion, but it's nearly there and no matter what you're shooting, you're going to get loads of keepers. I found the autofocus worked far better once you'd manually chosen what subject you wanted it to track. Like the X-H2, the X-T5 offers in-body stabilization. Considering how good Fuji stabilization systems have always been, even before they were making X-mount cameras, I wasn't surprised to discover it holding my images very steady, whether in stills or video mode, another great feature, particularly as Fuji are famous for their excellent prime lenses, most of which are not optically stabilized. I found the X-T5 sitting in my hand a bit more comfortably also. To my mind, the X-T5 really does have wonderful build quality and my only gripe would be that an articulating screen would have been so much better for video work and some kind of still photography also. Okay, let's look at what kind of image quality that 40 megapixel sensor can give us. I took these test pictures with the new Fuji XF 30mm macro lens, with the aperture stopped down to f4, which is more than sharp enough to fulfill this camera's 40 megapixel sensor, well, in the middle of its images anyway. Let's take a look at the raw image quality first, up against JPEG, and the base ISO is 125 here, which is nicely lower than older Fuji cameras. The raw image is showing tons of fine detail, as you'd expect from a 40 megapixel sensor. The JPEG image looks good, but a little over sharpened, leading to a smudging of fine details, I think, which is visible on a rock face in this picture. The JPEG still looks very good, but I've been getting increasingly concerned by over sharpening on the Fuji JPEG engines, and this was with sharpening set to zero. Still, the image is looking pretty great. Let's see how the camera copes at higher ISO levels now. In the top left, you see ISO 125, the base ISO. Below that, ISO 400 is virtually as good. ISO 800 begins to see just a touch of noise, but nothing serious. However, ISO 1600 is beginning to see quite noticeable noise, with colors and contrast and fine detail all beginning to suffer. Let's push that ISO even higher, where unfortunately we see further deterioration, with 3200 looking really quite rough, and shooting at 12800 would only be an act of desperation. So, the X-T5 offers plenty of detail in its images, as you'd expect from a 40 megapixel sensor, but high ISO levels yield noisy images, a little worse than on my Canon EOS R7, I'd say, although that Canon camera only has a 32.5 megapixel sensor, so it seems like quite an even trade-off between resolution and noise there. The X-T5 also includes a 20-shot pixel shift shooting mode to give you 160 megapixel images stitched together by your sensor, and if you'd like to know how well that worked for me, then check out my review of the Fuji X-H2. I did a whole feature about it, and it works exactly the same on the X-T5. Alright, let's move on and take a look at video quality, with a camera offering a number of video shooting modes, including 6.2K, oversampled 4K with all eye and log modes also. Well, let's start with a regular quality 4K, which gathers an image from the whole width of the camera's sensor. At base ISO, we're getting a decent amount of detail in here. ISO 800 and particularly 1600 are getting a bit grainy, and we're seeing some false colour creeping in there also. ISO 3200 is looking rough, and 6400 and 12800 look really quite dreadful here. By the way, I tested the 4K 60p mode, and the picture quality looked the same as this. So, let's try 4K in high quality mode. This crops your footage in by 1.23 times. This footage certainly does look a little cleaner and sharper, and there's less noise at the higher ISOs here too. 
However, ISO 3200 and beyond are still looking particularly troublesome, but at least we're not getting the same amount of false colour here. Finally, let's check out 6.2K. Unsurprisingly, we're seeing loads of lovely fine detail here, and pleasingly, up to ISO 1600, that noise is mostly under control also. Once again, as before, stopping down to ISO 3200 or beyond leads to a rapid deterioration of image quality, as you can see here. Overall, this wouldn't be my first choice of camera for shooting in low light situations, but if you can keep those ISOs down to 1600 or below, then you have a lot of good quality, highly detailed options to play with here. Oh, and there's one more video mode to check out, the camera's high speed 1080p 240 frames per second option. Here it is, and you can see it doing an amazing job of slowing down your footage and capturing lots of fine detail, but unfortunately it's also capturing a lot of false colour and blockiness at the same time. I admit, shooting a scene like this is a major stress test for any camera capturing video, but still, I was hoping for slightly better. At least it has decent enough dynamic range, or at least it seems to. This camera does not have the fastest sensor in the world, so let's take a look at rolling shutter. Shoot at 1080p, or at standard 4K, and rolling shutter is noticeable, but not out of control. However, stop up to 4K fine mode, or 6.2K, and it gets considerably worse, so this may not be the camera you want to shoot your next action movie with. Let's see about image stabilisation in video mode for vlogging. Here's some footage taken at 8mm without any stabilisation. Here's the same footage, just with sensor stabilisation, not much difference there. And here's some footage with sensor and digital stabilisation, and well, things are still looking pretty bumpy, I'm afraid, although that digital stabilisation will still be useful for more genteel shooting, although it won't work when shooting in 4K high quality mode. Well, those are some of the key specs and features of the Fuji X-T5. I haven't even touched upon those lovely Fuji film simulations, offering endless exploration, HEIF support, as well as practical things like wireless control from a computer and flicker reduction. Alongside the camera's wonderful build quality and image stabilisation, it all adds up to a generous package for your money, making a wonderful user experience, and overall, I absolutely loved my time working with it. Admittedly, it's a camera with a few niggles, and they tend to be in areas where a more expensive, premium, full-frame camera would take the advantage. I would have preferred less aggressive sharpening on JPEGs out of the camera, and the trade-off for its dense 40 megapixel sensor comes in noisier image and video quality at higher ISO levels, so this won't be a good camera for shooting video in dark situations, or for stills photography at very high shutter speeds for a long period of time. You should also bear in mind that this sensor will need very sharp camera lenses in order to realistically resolve 40 megapixels in the first place. Thankfully, Fuji's newer prime lenses seem to be up to the challenge, but they will set you back a lot more money. But still, the X-T5 neatly combines great power with a seriously enjoyable user experience. With the right lens attached to its 40 megapixel sensor, its images will really burst with a detail that reminds you of shooting full frame, and its build quality and features are as enjoyable and tactile as ever. Get some beautiful lenses and you'll be absolutely laughing, so this camera comes, unsurprisingly, highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found that review helpful and as enjoyable to watch as I found it to make. Uh, if you really enjoy the videos I put out on this channel and you find yourself watching them often, then check out my Patreon page in the description below. There you'll find all kinds of exclusive bonus content for Patreon supporters, as well as early access, uh, a camera, diary, all kinds of things going on over on Patreon, and the lovely warm feeling inside from supporting this channel and keeping these reviews trucking on. Ciao for now, everyone.